It is time for this week's Happier at Home with Deb Bernanke, and we're talking about how to determine whether an older loved one needs more help in order to remain home and independent. Good morning, Deb. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Um, this, this can be a touchy subject for um, many families who are going through this. Um, what are there are two areas that you say family members need to assess uh, to make this determination? What are those? Right. Well, they're the areas of activities of daily living and then what we call um, the uh, instrumental activities of daily living. So the activities of daily living are the regularly um, done activities that everyone really has to do. Mm -hmm. So bathing, dressing, eating, transferring, um, making sure they're able to toilet well, mm -hmm. uh, and taking care of those independently. Right. So what families really need to do uh, are make sure that they're able to, when they're going into their loved one's home, just take a look around and assess how things are um, in comparison to what they were last time they were there sure. or over a number of months and see if these areas perhaps are an area of decline yeah. or if they see that some of the areas in the home um, even the upkeep are um, are slipping um, so the instrumental activities of daily living are things like setting up their medications uh, preparing meals uh, driving making sure that they could uh, take care of these um, organization of all of these activities. Mm -hmm. um, so when when we're looking at, when, when you see someone on a daily basis, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't pick up on these things. Um, but when there's an event like COVID happening, going into the hospital, uh, different things that may trigger something that would cause someone to decline, you really need to reassess, step back and um, take an objective look yeah. uh, at what's going on in the home. And because so many people will say, I'm fine, I don't need the help really, um, because it, it's they're fearing that they're going to lose their independence. independence. Now, Deb, and I what our ask... main goal is keeping the independence. Deb, I wanted to ask you, of the things you listed off, or those two categories, is there a threshold? Say, okay, my family member doesn't meet two out of the five criteria or one of the five I, at what point if they if they're not checking off you know something off that list do do you step in and intervene well sometimes um just one of them may cause you uh concern okay. so for example dementia trumps everything because then if dementia um is occurring they may um not be able to remember things that will keep them safe or how to take their medication safely. Um, so in general, what you should do is have someone like myself, um, a, an expert come in, um, a companion care company, a case manager that can assess these things. I know through Happier at Home, we don't charge to come in and um, meet with your loved one and do an assessment to understand where their deficits lie. Um, there's not a specific number threshold, sure. but when you're dealing with things like long-term care insurance and filing a claim, then there is a threshold. Yeah, and I, we don't have much time to dive into this, but I imagine your services and others that you can call can delicately kind of help the family member understand what's going on and, and why they're gonna need help, but so they can keep their independence. Where can people go for more information? Uh, on our website, happieratthome.com, or you can certainly call us at 633-5555. And you're right, they just, we, if, if we go in, they'll see that it's not, um, not something that's threatening and that we really want to help them stay in their home. Yeah. So it, it's a good thing to get us involved early on instead of at a crisis level. Well, Deb, some good things to keep in mind. Thank you for helping families navigate through this journey. And uh, we'll see you next week. Local headlines are coming up next. Thanks.